Hi, I'm Alex. I'm here to present the paper Coding Bias in the Use of Behavior Management Technologies Uncovering Socio Technical Consequences of Data Driven Surveillance in Classrooms. This paper was co authored by Gabby Marcou, Mark Ackerman, and Tawana Dillahan. With the growing adoption of data driven educational technologies, critical scholarship in education has criticized technologies like facial recognition and behavior management systems' role in naturalizing control and discipline in education. However, the empirical understanding of how the socio-technical consequences of such technologies unfold are still lacking. In this paper, we look into the question, what are the socio-technical consequences of data-driven behavior management technologies on children? We look into one of the most popular digital interventions for classroom management on the market, ClassDojo. ClassDojo is a software that teachers can use on their phones, tablets, and laptops in the classroom allows teachers to tokenize desired and undesired behavior categories in the classrooms and assign points to each behavior category. Teachers can reward points to or take points away from students by manually documenting students' behavior in the classrooms. Teachers can view the whole classrooms and individual students' behavior report in the specific time frame as the lunchers. Class Dojo also provides audio and visual feedback to student behavior. Desired behaviors are color coded in red, and undesired behaviors are color coded in green. Through a qualitative interview study with 20 K 8 teachers, we identify four ways in which the use of Class Dojo materializes and perpetuates unequal conditions of marginality and in classrooms and education. First, simplifying what's behind the data point. Class Dojo's point system allows teachers to measure the dichotomy of whether the behavior expectation is met or not. However, this dichotomy essentially rejects seeing students' behavior as a spectrum in practice. Also, students' misbehavior in the classrooms could be brought about by complex psychosocial and emotional underpinnings and the conditions of disabilities. And a lot of these factors might be out of students' control and happening outside the school but these factors aren't really reflected in class dojo behavior data. Second, overlooking human and human interactions. Developing relationships with students via meaningful interactions is critical. However, our interviews with teachers revealed that such human and human interactions could be overlooked in the use of class dojo in two ways. First, such interactions can be devalued and perceived as unnecessary, and caring for students could become caring for data representation of students on class dojo. And second, students who are quiet can be rendered invisible under surveillance and thus miss the opportunity of receiving care from teachers. Next, replicating biases in the use of technology. This manifests in three ways. First, Teachers' existing biases can lead to intentional targeting and profiling on class dojo and heightened scrutiny, scrutiny towards stereotyped students. In particular, black and brown students could become hyper-visible. Second, the bias data entry can legitimate and reinforce teachers' biases through class dojo's immediate audio and visual feedback. And then the bias data entries of Students could be communicated among teachers and within the school, which can in institutionalize these biases in the broader socio-technical assemblage. And finally, although we didn't really interview students directly, we identified potential psychological impacts on students by based on teachers' observations. Teachers observed that it was common for students to get discouraged develop an I don't care attitude and thus give up in the classroom if they have been constantly targeted on the class dojo point system. Some students would even label themselves as the, the always on 100% kid or a bad boy in terms of their performance on class dojo. Taken together, our results illustrate how the use of class dojo can perpetuate inequality in education. First, students who are already disadvantaged in different ways can be subjected to differential and augmented scrutiny. The systematic oppression along the lines of race, gender, class, and ability could be reinforced. Second, the identities that embody the biases and systematic inequalities can produce meanings about both who the students are and the meanings through which students understand themselves and view the world. And finally, tensions in what to measure 
who to measure and how to measure could accumulate and escalate the everyday politics and bias in the classroom to the institutional level. We turn to the reflexive interventionist approach to investigate how the HCI community could simultaneously avoid the pitfalls as identified in our critique of the present and adopt an anticipatory design approach to speculate alternatives. In this way, we propose three interventions as a first step for designing and using future educational technologies. First, providing context in which the data were collected and used. Data is never value, value neutral. Our work shows that class social behavior data fail to take situated socio-emotional underpinnings and the nuance of behavior into account. For future educational technology, there must be space for incorporating nuances and contextual information in the data collection process, such as who is doing the data collection work, how the data, behavior data is collected, and the environment in which the behavior data is generated and collected. Indeed, such data are still subjective, but accurately recording the context would increase the transparency in future use and allow for analysis of unequal power relations inherent in the data. At the same time, future designs should enable the communication of context when presenting and making use of this data. This is especially critical in order to prevent biased data being considered as the objective and neutral representation of students and then used to justify the existing systematic oppression. Next, exposing biases in the use of data and data-driven systems. While we have shown that the use of class dojo could reinforce teachers' biases, our results also reveal opportunities for systems like class dojo to support teachers' self-assessment of their own biases. While the data collected on students are currently utilized to evaluate student behavior and performances, future educational technologies to shift the power dynamics by exposing potential biases in the collected data set. For example, is a student being constantly profiled? Are students with certain shared traits constantly receiving more undesired behavior warnings? And is the student getting more rewards from one teacher but more warnings from another? This shift could raise teachers' awareness of their biases and push them to really reflect on the negative consequences of their pedagogy and interactions with students. We also argue that it is crucial to design for supporting users' reflexivity in order to achieve socially just and equitable outcomes. This way, users can start reflecting on what power dynamics and assumptions that they are bringing into the use of technologies. Finally, and most importantly, we move on to challenging and speculating the alternative normal in education. As we have described, dominant norms and beliefs are used to define and create educational technologies like Class Dojo. So instead of designing within the default setting, future educational technologies, researchers and practitioners should challenge the status quo that is and dismantle the default normal in education through the masses like design fictions and participatory speculative design. This way we will be able to start centering the values and everyday realities that are left out of the current educational technologies. At the same time, we argue that there is no single replacement of the problematic behavior management that can fundamentally address the systematic oppression embedded within the system. HCI researchers and practitioners should collectively question ban aiding student behaviors through new single pieces of educational technologies that automate the unjust logic in classrooms. Instead, we must challenge the naturalization of deploying surveillance and behavior management systems in classrooms and schools. Collectively, HCI should redirect the focus onto envisioning a set of alternatives to reconfigure and support the power relations that uplift children, be it technology or not. We end our presentation with a quote from Ruha Benjamin. When bias and inequality come to light, lack of intention to harm is not a viable alibi. The goal of this paper is to call for a critical reflection on seeing classrooms and schools as natural sites to deploy new data-driven educational technologies and behavior management systems like seem neutral. We aim to initiate a humble reflection on the ways in which education, technologies, and embodied human actors have been thought, acted, and entangled upon. 
Thank you. Please refer to our paper for more details.